everybody and welcome back. This is the Mad Salvi, your favorite squirrel, the one who tries to bring you as impartial information as I possibly can. Of course, there's going to be some objectivity here and there. There's going to be some subjectivity there. There's going to be some opinion, all that kind of stuff. But, but just sit down, relax. This is going to be a bit of a long ride. Just preparing you for it. What it happened now is that we're hitting a bombshell. Huge document just dropped uh, onto all of us. And I'm going to be reading it for you. I'm going to try to make it so you can follow along with me. So this is a more refined, better source version of that when the TPIDPM posted. TLDR is on the bottom. All known Nijisanji controversies are also towards the end, including KRJPEN. Readings, if you want to jump to a specific section, they all have it there. Okay. Financial issues. The first one, a severe lack of spending from Nijisanji. In December 2023, January 2024, Nijisanji bought back 2.5 billion yen worth of stock to artificially inflate their stock price or buyback. This comes around to 18 million US dollars, about one cost of Hololive's 3D studio. The buy buyback studio information is right there. This is what a lot of companies do. A lot of companies do buybacks, but they they did it specifically to inflate their price, being saying that like, oh, look at all these people that are buying our stock. We have this much valuation. We have this much stock going around. It's going to look so much better for us. Okay, continuing on. The, progress, the progress of the treasury stock repurchase, total amount of shares repurchased in accordance to the resolution of the board of directors meeting held in December 18, 2023. One, total number of shares purchased is 775,200 shares. Total amount of repurchase, 2.5 billion Japanese yen. This is big. Why do stock buybacks happen at all? And such have to do with the company. The answer may surprise you. Hololive and Niji's main competitor, and on top of Hololive is Niji's main competitor, and on top of investing in the company and by building the biggest 3D mocap studio in Japan, it is very beautiful, by the way, which finished last year, they outspent Niji six to one in terms of funding per talent, which is why their talents enjoy themselves, which is why their talents enjoy everything that's going on, because they're getting paid more, they are getting uh, supported more, everything is working for them. So. In terms of funding per talent, management salary and projects, 86,000 USD per talent versus 10, 14K USD in our, is the upper estimate. So keep in mind, this Niji is almost twice the number of talents. See the problem already? Yeah, they don't want to spend per talent hardly anything. This is why things bad things are happening. This is the highest estimate for Niji Sanji. Any color spending is down here. Hololive spending is right over here. And so is Cover Corp spending overall. Hololive's end of year report, approximately 6 billion Japanese yen for SG&A costs. This SG&A cost on the flip side for any color spent 2.2 billion Japanese yen. So about three times of SG&A cost per same fiscal year. They're selling general administrative expenses, page 10 of any color financial report. So this is anything they sell, anything that's general expenses, and anything administrative expenses. So Niji Sanji is right here. The fiscal year, the net sales is the top one is 14 million. Uh, the cost of sales of the fiscal year 2022 was 8 million. It became 13 million in... Uh, 2023 and 2022 is 14 million for net sales, 25 million for uh, Niji Sanji in total. Gross profit, 5 million yen, uh, yen I, mean, I assume, on 2022, 11 million. So they doubled it pretty much. And they're still spending crappily. They're still spending horribly. Selling general administrative expenses, 1.7 to 2.1 in 2023. Operating profit, 4.19 in uh, 2022, 9.4 in 2023. So that's operating profit. That's what's left for them. What is left overall after everything is paid and done. That's how much profit they made. Hollow lives. Historical trends in SG&A expenses. They had uh, 1.9 billion yen, it looks like, in fiscal quarter year of 2023. So according to Hollow Lives' own graphs and data, page 8 for the fiscal year, approximately a third of that 6 billion yen operating expense was used for personal expenses. So they allow their talents to do even more personal expenses than even um, like have more personal expenses for talents, which are salaries and staff and management above what Niji Sanji will do. It's spending about 2 billion yen, about $15 million in 2023 for salaries, staff and management. Uh, about 50% of employees are directly related to management and such. 7.5 million yen. Uh, million dollars, I believe, in this case. 10.5 million dollars, which is billions of yen. My correction. The company structure here, as you can see, it is planning and development, VTuber branding, streaming, etc. This is all as, as of December 21st, uh, 31st. You can take a look at it here. It all has, they have their own, like, back office is 13%, Metaverse is 11%. 
all these people with their darn metaverses. Uh, agency management is 21%, sales and marketing 21%, and IP planning, content creation, infrastructure is 36%. I believe this is still Hololive right here. Uh, this is for, yeah, I believe it's still them. Uh, current, no, these are, this, this is, I, I stand corrected, this is all any color right here. The current liabilities, all of these, the contract liabilities overall is 111,000, income taxes 2.4 million, accrued expenses 381,000, payable trade, all these are their liabilities. And the explanation is down below. Subtracting all Niji Sanji's selling and general expenses from 2.2 billion yen total comes out to 300 million yen for administrative expenses, 1.24 billion for accounts payable trade, 390 million for accrued expenses, 111 million for contract liabilities, page 9 of any colors report, for a grand total of 2.5 million US dollars spent on administrative expenses, 2.5 million dollars divided between 180 talents is for administrative expenses a pitiful 14,000 US dollars per year per talent that is compared to up above here where you can see that uh hollow life spent 86k us dollars per talent that tells you that they spent a lot more giving salaries giving bonuses giving all these things for talent it says right here again yet cover spent 7.5 million dollars specifically on management on their 87 talents meaning that they got 86k per talent they're being paid like five times more minimum pretty much five times more than in, in Hollow Live and Cover compared to the Ninja Sanji talents. And that's on average. It's horrible. That is really bad. This was done with the conversion rate of yen US dollars in April 2023, just so you can be sure. And to keep in mind, if all this administrative fees, expenses, etc., and just management, administrative expenses are also lawyers' fees, insurance, rent, and supplies, utilities. Cover's data specifically mentions that their spending is on personal expenses for the number mentioned, 15 million. So that's not all the extra administrative stuff on top of that. So that is like Cover is doing just as good as, as Niji Sanji, but it's paying their people even better. And that is why I've always said that Cover, even though it is a mega corporation, seems to be doing right by their people. In that case, if we take about half of the administrative expenses and claim the remaining is for management, that leaves us with a whopping 30, uh, with topping 7 K US dollars per year per talent. So about seven to one ratio between talent and management if managers are paid average salaries. That is horrible, but that is expected in a large corporation. But still, that's why they're considered Kuro Sanji at this point. It just doesn't work out. It is likely that not all personnel within Niji Sanji are management. Since Hololive had a dedicated team for Hollow Earth, it's likely that the percentage of management among staff is higher within Niji Sanji. Even, so, even though with a generous estimate of two thirds of staff being management, the number is still daunting. Assuming 14K per year per talent in Niji Sanji is true, and assuming that the talent managers get paid about the same salary in Japan, 41K USD, we're looking at a talent to manager ratio of four to one in the highest estimate. If we take the lowest estimate, about 4,600 USD per year per talent, considering that a third of their staff isn't management, it comes out to 12 to one, 12 talents for one manager. That is what they're showing. There's 12 talents, according to this person in here, for the entertainment company, 12 talents in Niji Sanji versus one manager. This coincides with what Zion Lanza said that you only get one manager per like six or seven people. It's even worse. It's anywhere from four to one in the in the best case scenario to 12 to one in the worst case scenario managers. I mean, uh, talents to managers. That is really bad management for an entertainment company. And of course, they have the PDF right here that you can take a look at. That's all in this document down here. Now, continuing. At six times the difference between Hollow Live and Niji Sanji when it comes to spending on personnel, if operating under the highest estimate, Niji Sanji's personnel costs. Uh, any color's balance sheet does not separate the expenses between JP and EN, nor do they give us an exact number for in in personnel expenses. It may be possible, especially looking at Niji Sanji's recent job postings in Canada, that the actual expenses for management in Niji EN is worse than its JP counterpart. So it could be more expensive for them to have management overall. As a result of the above, the operating results for the current fiscal year for Niji Sanji were net sales of 25 million for 25 million 341,711 yen up 79 78.9% from the year before operating profit of 9.4 million 410,018 yen up 124.5% from the year before ordinary profit of 9.4 million uh yen uh up from 120%. So they are all everything has been up. Profits have been up. Net profit of 6.69 million yen up 139%. So the profits are up, but they're still not paying their people. That's what I want to get across here. Net sales are up 80%, yet operating profits are up 125%. That's a severe imbalance of actual reinvesting into the company and spending money on their own talents. Riku is just spending it on the yacht, as people say. Just by the numbers alone, profits grew from 14 billion yen to 25 billion yen, but operating costs only went up from 10 billion yen to 16 billion yen. So it almost it, it went up by 10 billion yen on uh 
profits, but it only went up by 6 billion yen in expenses. This despite the sharp increase of JP and N livers in the same period. So they got a ton more people, but they didn't spend a lot more on their people. That's what they're going on right here. On top of this, Niji Sandy spent 500k on new equipment, machinery, buildings, vehicles, etc. For the tech company, that is surprisingly low in comparison. HoloLive spent $13 million, so 26 times as much for the same thing. Compared to cover, increase of 13.7 billion yen to 20.5. 20 On the flip side, the operating cost went from 11.8 to 17 billion, basically keeping consistent percentage of operating costs. Uh, so they've been, they remain consistent. And right here, down here, it says, you know, there have also been issues with cover, which there have. There's a Coco incident with Taiwan. There's a Rushi incident with NDAs. Mel incident with NDAs. But they're also saying, compared to Nidhi Sanji and, you know, them trying to badmouth their talents, they, the talents on Hololife left in a professional way. They were handled well. Mel left with a farewell message and staff wishing her well. In future endeavors, they didn't have public backlash and the, the whole situation was handled professionally with PR. All good. Now we go to the spending issues, except when it comes to manipulating the company's value. Niji is sitting on big pile of cash. Early 2023, they had approximately $82 million in the bank. Hololive has similar numbers. Any color has the edge of income and profit especially. So why can't they have management and such? So basically, they're not spending as much. Working capital, liquid assets that can be quickly converted to liquid assets was 12.5 billion yen, which is around 82 million. So that's liquid assets, things that can actually be spent. I mean, there has to be a reason why they're looking for part-time bilingual translators for the EN branch, something that I showed before uh, on, my, on my channel, the one where I said that they're doing like um, sweatshop labor. The buyback is certain that they spent a good portion of the liquid assets on the buyback to appease shareholders to make sure that the stock stayed high. They have good amount of money, over 60 million, if you as numbers are believed, but it's clear that they have spent in the past couple of years, they don't spend like spending money unless inflating the company's value. Buybacks are usually large established companies carry out that have enough money to carry out such actions. Buybacks pump up the price of stock, but it's usually not long term. Basically, you buy a more higher demand, higher price. Company that is hedging uh, on the bet and on a rapid future growth usually invests the funds they have to expand more, or at least traditional theory goes. The recent controversy of Selen's termination has crashed the stock prices to the gutter pre-buyback. Any color with stock was hovering around 3150. Now it's around, uh, and January it shot up to 3800 right here, and it has crashed down to be around 3000 yen right now, which is a psychological line that will lead to mass sell layoffs, sell offs if they cross the threshold below 3040 yen. Why 3000 yen? Because that's the lowest price per before the buyback. And if it goes under 3,000, it means large shareholders that were keeping stock price alive have given up. There is some evidence to support that this may happen even when the Japanese stock market reports next Monday as the stock crashed from 38,180, open to 3040, closing. And since then, to 28, the stock has recovered and climbed away to 3,000 floor. However, it is hovering around the price of the stock before the buyback. So they have issues with the buyback, possibly. The lowest price in half a year, June 2023, even lower than before the buyback, is devastating financially for them. It will very, really well, really will be. Expected that the stock will uh, drop eventually, but not before March when they to release its earnings reports. If it goes below their buyback price, of course, uh, the inflation that they had in their buyback was way, was way earlier than expected and much more disastrous fashion as well. The company just blew $18 million into nothingness with Jack sh to show for it. So basically, they spent $18 million for the buyback and they don't have anything to show for it. The stock is even lower than before. Even worse, they can no longer buy back stocks as they'll be unlisted if they do. If they can't pump up the stock price anymore, now they're stuck with whatever controversy hits their stock. Stock price total ownership between the executives investment etc is usually 70 percent uh nikkei exchange requires 25 percent to be on the market nidhi sanji is over leveraged so this is all about stock stuff so they're saying things like if the if the buyback price is lower they lost money from 18 million dollars of the buyback as a stock price they bought it is higher than the current price so they're losing money right now they pissed a full million into the wind uh funnily enough the japanese stock exchange just hit their highest value so the stock exchange isn't the problem stock exchange is doing well it's like you buy a bunch of items to the maple story and betting that the price will inflate and then the price goes down you lose money from the purchase that's pretty much what it is so while their main competitor is showing tangible results of the brand new studio upcoming vr platform and more assets niji spent a lot of money on on their buyback and they have nothing to show for it even worse Niji Sanji carried out a stock split last year, 15 to 1. So while Niji has pulled off every trick in the book to keep their prices inflated, uh, the end result is still a stock has barely risen since last year. The, the stock prices change plus 83% for Hololife plus 40% on any color before the drop. Uh, basically, cover stock price has actually uh, increased more steadily than any colors, even though cover hasn't done much to inflate the value. So they haven't done anything to artificially inflate. There's not to mention the Niji uh, IR statement. Uh, last year mentioned how Niji Yen would be the pillar of the business. Currently, Japan's economy is in a recession, or maybe, or set to be, and the Yen is extremely weak, because it is. It's like 120 or something per, per dollar. Now, that only, but not that only, but in JP market, for VTubers, it's oversaturated. Niji Sanji needs to show 
future growth potential to appease the investors, but with recent controversy, they won't be able to. Uh, in terms of business segments, we experience, expect the commerce promotion will, will remain in growth driver. We will put effort into expanding segments overseas through such measures exhibits both Nidisandi and EN's overseas uh, power. Uh, this is from Niji's new yearly fiscal report. It's looking extremely unlikely. Now to continue. Overseas branches, controversy, Niji Sanji cover-ups. Here's some information about other branches. This is not the first time the company has blown up overseas expansion routes. It's pretty on par with Niji Sanji. This is the fourth branch they've blown up in the last two years. IN branch, it was a mess from the beginning. It debuted right before Hollow Myth. Uh, the first EN gen, they immediately terminated the entire branch after a fumble. ID was also had good management, arguably one of the best managed branch in JP, besides JP. Uh, staff didn't shy away from appearing on stream, uh, but you guessed it, they cut it to cut costs. The branch failed, was all fall, failed into JP, as other people have told me before, and um, they have been left as terminated. A lot of people terminated, some people were, were absorbed into JP, some people left. Uh, then we have KR, which is Korea. Uh, Illyria's click theory caught on the first place as KR was run by a female VTuber with an actual click that docks the other talents. Her name was Ara and was fully, and she was a bully who slandered the entire branch. Pretty much everyone in Niji KR. Ara was suspended towards the end of Niji KR as a result of a lot of her conversations slandering Niji KR. It was leaked and she was sued by Yuya, another KR member. Good management would have suspended Ara and trying to confirm facts for. Uh, and firing who wants to be confirmed. Instead, care management protected her and went after the forms that they were exposing this info. Uh, the time, like the VTubers and all that kind of stuff. It, the time was incredible on point. Yami tweeted out a message exasperated when this happened uh, as much as DGKR took a lengthy break in January of 2022, right before the termination in likely protest. It's not con coincidence that these two graduation announcements happened at the same time. This is not including one of the first people they hired in Korea who had an extensive background being a bully. TLDR, she worked for another company and abandoned them when Niji moved to Korea. She sabotaged her own genmates to get a leg up. Said Liver, Mo Mwarin, bullied people viciously enough that it caused her high school classmates to end up in the hospital, which required surgery. It wasn't just bullying, it was straight up WW2 Japanese style blank, according to reports. More info there on the Reddit, on the Reddit post that is about the Mwarin quit Niji Sanji KR for a specific person. The Lyric Click Theory. A conspiracy theory that claims that one of the one of the talents took over management role as they could speak Japanese and management either demanded or under or underpaid, hence her reshuffling was either terminated or, or underpaid. As expected, the KR branch folded quickly after the scandal. It's rumored that ID was also bundled into the fold since KR and ID died at the same time. It would look like Niji was centralizing rather than killing a branch due to their own incompetence. The female VTuber, Ara, involved got away scot-free for reasons we can only speculate. If anything, Niji Sanji buried her background as deeply as possible. So that's another bad thing that they've done. The numbers, Mason, what do they even mean? Now look at Enna, one of the largest female streamers in a constant her birthday live. Compared to last year, views and earnings that were down more than half, with most of the donors uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, compared to last year, where most of them were from the US. So here it is. Her super chats were um, right around here. You can see all of her stuff here compared to this year. It was all down. Her views were down, her replays were down, everything were down. Her CCV, her concert was 13218, Zatsudan CD was 5373. So that's really bad. You can see over here, uh, all the numbers as well. Everything is looking bad. CCV was 7976 and 3759 this year. So it dropped from 13,000 to 7,000 and from 5373 down to 3759. This is all public info and can be seen in YT YouTube analysis websites. 44% of viewers and donations last year were from the US, while only 14% from, were from Hong Kong. Yet this year, the revenue, 24% from US, 55% from Jap Japanese and Chinese citizens. So she's getting it, but maybe because they felt bad. I don't know. She's getting it from other, other sources now. And is a great singer, and she's one of the big, biggest talents left in EN. She had a lot of fellow livers join her concert stream, yet numbers were down massively. Just this year, Niji Yan had three talents leave the company, Pomo, Sun, and Kyo. Niji Sandy's CEO even had that even that if the talents leave, their fans would be redistributed among other talents. That's what he thought. Yet Pomu and Selen were the biggest female talents in the EN, and while Kyo has a sizable following as well, so why are numbers way down? With almost evaporated support from EN and nations like the US, if if everything was going to be redistributed. So it wasn't. He was lying. Why are Niji Livers, many of them talented in their own right, unable to hit four-digit CCVs, except when select, uh, the select few, the select high ones? Everyone down here. 2610, 1800, 1000, 782, 674, 599, 538, 535. You can see it all right here in this fit photo here. And even worse, abysmal donations from the public. Uh, to this point, there are two members of the newest gen, TTT, earned a grand combined total of 8,000 USD, which is still a lot, in four months comparison, the lowest super chatted member of Hololien in recent gen was uh, 
Hollow Ian's advent was 100k in seven months. So that's a lot more. It's in like a little less than twice the time Bibu made like almost 20 times the amount. Heck, they didn't even do the bare minimum to promote their, native, their newest EN gen. I didn't even know it existed. Hardly any promotions on social media or even any trailer songs promotions from other Nijian talents. Uh, Hollow Life created Advent in the best way possible. All their debut streams peaked at over 100k concurrent watching for the entire stream. So they didn't just have like peak and then drop quickly. They were hyped for a month in advance. Uh, the teaser at the end of the EN concert, Connect the World. Radio silence to allow speculation theories to form, which they, they're really good at doing. Uh, allowing the hype to reach its peak before making the new gen official, uh, not too long to prevent the hype from dying out too early. Channel release several days ahead of debut streams, heavily promoted anywhere even in JP, a very solid trailer, more personalized sealers for each, each, each member, a large, a great song, a lot of covers and streams immediately off the bat. It's barely cost anything. This was good internal networking and spreading the news to all existing fans. The only costs involved were the trailers and the song. How is Niji unable to match this at all? To the point even where their top female EN streamers didn't know about their new gen. You guessed as good as your guess is as good as mine. So they're they're just not even trying to push people even within their organization, which is dumb. This is just really bad. Afterward, from the author, if there have been any effective management or any sort of quality control from the parent company in Japan, all these controversies for every overseas branch probably wouldn't have happened. Yet the company seems to be very short-sighted, focusing on the immediate profits while sacrificing long-term stability and probable growth. Quarter three is might be fine in terms of earnings due to Niji Fest, other biggest er, uh, er, yearly events, but with their overseas market killed by one, what does Niji have left? Shareholders do not want to hear the phrase, we're stagnating from the company that they own shares of, yet due to all the short-sightedness and profit, this is exactly what is about to happen. If EN was really going to their pillar, maybe they would have invested a bit more into it. Turns out, investment into the company's talents, futures, along with many of the stable management and projects are better than a box stock buyback. Who knew? So if you manage your talents correctly and you give them the support that they need, who knew? You were, you were gonna, there were gonna be benefits. Oh my God, it's like pew, you know, the freaking explosion galaxy brain incident. It's like that, what the hell, man? I don't know what they're doing wrong. Now we get to the nitty gritty. All known controversy scandals, black company behavior here. The author had an aneurysm seeing how badly Niji is run. Yes, it's, it's handled very badly here. This is what I just read. Uh, an author note, some people have put it out, some of these links are Reddit threads or uh, such, however, these threads have much more context outside of sources and allegations. It's difficult to get concrete proof the, for the evidence for these events have either been scrubbed or buried, especially the Kiara case. However, there are many witnesses that watch these controversies play out in real time, so they are basic speculation. Also, not every controversy is on here. If they're not explicitly mentioned, it's because I deem that they were not in Niji Sanji's fault, or I would suspect PL identities of the libraries involved. Starting with Niji JP, Shindo Raito R scandal. Shindo Raito was hired in Niji Sanji back in 2019 and still holds the record for the fastest termination of the Indian Niji library. His background is extremely controversial and criminal. Basically, he had an extremely sketchy past where he, where he claimed that he had drugged somebody and, and R'd them. On top of this, he admitted his PL accounts and he signed up to join Niji Sanji to D and R female livers and do a lot of off collabs with them to achieve his goals. Niji caught on within a few days, but allegedly docked some of the livers and leaked confidential info before he was terminated. So he did some damage. He did some really big damage in 2019. By the way, all this information was public accounts, such as Twitter, before he joined. Why he left Niji Sanji? Why did the heck did Niji Sanji not check the background and seemingly committed the same mistake later on with KRR and Marin? Here are the links for that. Gundo Mirei's joke and termination. Gundo Mirei was not an improbable and problematic talent. She had been warned numerous times before by management due to her saying insensitive and inappropriate things. Yet despite that, she was one of the early livers to be in the company for several years by that point, uh, from 2019 to 2023. So if she was problematic, why was she still there? Yet the official reason for her termination was making a joke about baseball. So it was a problematic talent that they kept in there because of whatever reasons, who the heck knows, and she was let go because of baseball. I remember it happened last year. The joke in question, Mirei commented on her ignorance of baseball rules while reacting to the World Baseball Classic, which is a humongous thing for Nidhi Sanji and is a big sponsor for Nidhi Sanji. So that's why this happened. Among other jokes was how about she didn't know what a strike or a home run are. And she tweeted, so if a strong person standing there, can the person who pitches the ball just chuck it at their head at, or a body to make them leave the pitch without the pitch that way? So she was saying basically they could throw it on their head. Uh, now, it is fair to say there were legitimate concerns that her comment, which sparked outrage within Japan, could lead to the end of Niji Samaji's collaboration with Koshien, their big yearly event, along with Perms for to stream Power Pro's conjunction with it. What is not okay is the company deciding to throw the liver under the bus, even joining in on the hate raid against her. Uh, basically, the company outed all their grievances with her in public to soothe the public anger. 
and as they did with freaking uh, Zion Lanza and a lot of other people. The agency added that it was reprimanded by re- reprimanded the VTuber for inappropriate statements on numerous occasions in the past, and she posted a tweet without heeding the warnings. The company is currently scrutinizing Guno Mire's public publicly available content and vowed to ensure that its talents do not step out of bounds in the future. If you look at all these terminations, except Shindo's, of course, Nidhi Sandy should be appall- applauded in terminating them quickly. They have a common theme. Nidhi Sandy throws her livers under the bus for terminate them. Why? Well, it's easier to tell the shareholders the talents are the problem rather than management is bad or, you know, or anything else. Termination with terminating them with grocery list of sins looks better than justifying the when justifying it to the shareholders. Oh, they were a troublemaker. They deserve to get fired. It's true. Now we have Zion Lanza. We all know about Zion Lanza. We all know the things that happened to her and she had her response. Let, look at Zion Lanza and Selene's termination letter. Look at Yugo's as well. They're all worded very similarly with pages of supported crimes with a valid one or two in between them. Mirei and other former livers mentioned how working Niji Sanji was like a prison after graduating termination. Mito's revolt against Niji Sanji. The next one. This is a pretty significant one of Suku- Suki no Miko. Uh, Mito was the first Niji liver similar to how Sora's hololized first. The fact that she took a stand along with a number of other livers against management and the company in 2019 should be telling. So she actually took a stand and that's why she was removed. Due to incompetent management that had lowered the livers morale significantly, many talents including Mito openly rebelled and demanded better conditions. It started off a joke and it rolled into an actual union-like group that clamored for improvements in management and standards within the company as a whole. Some of the things they wanted is the company made livers foot the bill. Some of the things they said, which Zion Lanza said as well, the company made the livers foot the bill for their own model without telling them beforehand. They had lack of management and support. Nibisanji pitted the livers against each other, creating a hostile workplace. Uh, there was really bad toilet paper, apparently. That's a grave state in my eyes. If I remember correctly, any color back in 2018 was run badly with respect to treatment of staff and talents. It was so bad that even Suki no Mita, the first Niji Liverick, was calling them out as a black company. Needless to say, Niji members are staging a revolt. That doubled, dubbed the Niji resistance. They called out for bad practice. They called out their bad practice, albeit as a parody. The message was sent. The management made changes to improve conditions. Don't remember what they did explicitly. Someone please reply. But the thing is, that was in 2018 when the company was small and concerns were addressed towards the domestic market, that being JP. So when they got bigger, they didn't address all these concerns anymore. Unfortunately, their efforts were in vain, as we see today. Niji Sanji didn't change. They just covered everything up better. All those problems that ex- exist with Niji Sanji to this day, except the toilet paper one. I really hope at least they fix that. So right now, Roa Mira Mi- Meiro controversy. Yuzuki Roa of YouTuber Niji Sanji has been on the hiatus for more than a year following a dispute in October 2020 with fellow now ex Niji Sanji VTuber Kinozaka Meido, spurred by the latter's adapting a very distinct way of speaking, similar to Roa's, among other things. Behind the scenes, chats involving these two and management were leaked by a gossip VTuber, Narukami Sabaki, whose intervention so, so stoked anger among the viewers and accusations of bullying. Something that both Roa and Niji Sanji's management company, Any Color Than Ichikara, have disputed. Many Meido identified as being behind the leak uh, info in having twice announced her retirement just to take it back was let go by Ichikara in any color due to the difficulty in establishing relationship of trust and violating of her non-disclosure agreement in her contract because she shared stuff. So I mean that kind of kind of works. TLDR, she was hired after Roa, she became a copy of Roa, Roa got angry, there were things in between them that they were, they were being said, there were things in between them and management that were being said. Um, there was a fight that went on. The confidential info got out because Mado felt that nothing was being done, uh, which portrayed Roa as a bully and led to an anti-campaign against her. I think she still has that campaign against her. Mado tried to graduate twice and pulled back a bit because supposedly things were going to get fixed to create public narrative that she was getting bullied. Management let her get away with it the first time, but she was fired after the second time and they discovered the NDA breach. Roa then, bought, then brought a lawsuit to stop the slander online after which she was forced to go on a hiatus for a year to stop the abuse, which leads to the conclusion that these these two livers were going at each other on Roa's case defending herself from the mobs or creating media controversy in the process of a few weeks minimum. Meanwhile, Niji Sanji sat by while doing nothing. This was entirely preventable on Niji Sanji's part, unlike Lulu's case where Auntie swarmed her doing to, uh, due to pure hatred and even escalated physical stalking, leading her to leave the company. Had they released any form of public statement or conducted any internal investigation swiftly instead of being on the back foot and allowing slander against Roa to spread despite her claims of being verifiable, none of this would have occurred. Instead, they waited for a full two months before act- actually terminating Meido. By that time, an outrage campaign was in full swing. 
Also, Maida was lying about her accent. She was copying Roa to eat into her viewer base, proved by screenshots from her own text. And they're there. A black eye from Keemstar. Nidisana did try to sue Sabaki, though, and lost particularly. Imagine that. A big billion dollar corporation able to prove that Sabaki was slandering their own talents, despite Japan's draconian slander laws. Basically, anyone can be sued for slander as long as their statements are even true, damaging the repu if they damage the reputation or image of an individual or organization. When they had clear-cut evidence that he used leaked information to start an anti-campaign against one of their talents. So they are so incompetent that even a slam dunk victory was not a slam dunk for them. Then we have Axia's harassment controversy. Axia Krohn was a unique case that sounds familiar to some of the VTubing community due to this model and personality. He developed, developed a very parasocial and out of control fan base that infantilized him, pressing his every move and trying to control his actions, including who he collabed with. When he fought back, he was swarmed with antis for months. It reached breaking point where mods could not stop the antis, even with a subscription only chat, and his antis spread the harassment campaign into the public sphere. Brigading streamers outside of the company uh, about him, this led to his long hiatus. A large portion of his fan base kept infantilizing him, even though he told them that he to stop and RP'd as his mom or manager. Every time they told him to stop, they'd respond with things like, Oh, Axia Kun, it's just your rebellious phase. They were toxic and controlling too, telling him that he can, who he can and can't collab with. Here's all the, the, uh, the proof for that one. And in the end, instead of trying to help him moderate his chat or support his attempted return, they decided to watch with their hands folded and accept the graduation that he stated. It was a difficult to continue his activities because what I wanted to do and the direction Nidhi Sanji did not match which is something that we see a lot nowadays. Why is this listed under here? Because again, this one seemed much more preventable compared to Lulu's case. Nidisanji had every opportunity, every power to help Axia remodel his own chat, moderate his own chat, set up preventive measures, or prevent any harassment towards any other livers who are associated with him, or cut his issue, this issue in the bed early on. Yet they didn't. And a talent, multiple talents considered in previous controversies, suffered for months before finally choosing to graduate themselves. I criticize Hololive for their handling of Coco's Taiwan incident, and I have done that too, openly. Similar case where Chinese anti stormed the chat and also had bare minimum preventive measures and caused her and her associates to suffer months long abuse. I will also call out Niji Sanji here. Yes, but Hololive was sorry for that. They apologized for that. They made concrete steps to fix it. Niji Sanji did not. Niji Sanji did handle 88 slander cases a month later and harassment campaign started. So I applaud them for becoming harsher in the harassment from antis in the future. And that's what I'm talking about right here, right up here. Uh, Niji antis harassment and, su and the S scandal regarding Aloe. Aloe. Aloe was an IRL friend of Chitose before joining Hololive. Chitose leaked uh, information about toxic and poor management issues with Niji Sanji prior to Aloe's Hololive debut in a stream using her PL account. Aloe Alo brought up this in passing, but in a very vague way to steer clear of slandering any talents to Nidhi Sanji or the company itself. She mentioned potential dangers of working for corporations, only mentioned Chitose's name in passing. This led to Nidhi Sanji antis to swarm her chat when she debuted Hololive, and that, um, going as far to pretend that they were Holo fans to harass her chat shortly after they doxed her, tracing her relations with Chitose back to her past life account, even going as far to send death threats and spam calls to her, her, her house and family. Due to this, Alo attempted S and thankfully recovered since she left Hololive due to her abuse. She in her new life, she's doing extremely well and I'm extremely happy. I've supported her since day one. I supported her and I will continue to support her as much as I possibly can. As it says here, as it says here, basically Niji drove her to attempt S. Melissa Kinreka's graduation, the one that we're going to have here. This one is a bit less eye-catching. The short version is Melissa Ken Kinreka was pursuing a more musical career uh, in Niji Sanji. As such, she requested her own rights to her own music, specifically two of her original songs she made and produced. Niji Sanji's management rejected her request, citing the fact that they legally owned her IP, including all of her music. This led her to deciding to not renew her contract and graduating from the company. Of course you would. If you're, you're actually doing all the work, why should they get the benefits of it? This one isn't as bad compared to some of the others. However, it's still a head-scratcher that the company is willing to lose some of its most popular livers left and right over the difference in IP rights to the music they paid produce for. I mean, I could give them that, but still it's not right. Bullying, toxicity, click all the good stuff Niji KR. Skip this part if you read the previous Niji KR above, because it's the same thing. Basically, the Niji KR, there was a, just to give you a rundown of everything. Um, Niji KR is why Alira's click theory caught on in the first place. It was run by a female VTuber with an actual click. She badmouthed the other people. She badmouthed people in the past. She badmouthed people that were around her. Ara it was her name. She was doing a lot of bullying, a lot of slander for the entire branch. Uh, if there was good management, they would have suspended her, but they did not. And this is what I'm reading here. They did not. Uh, they would have tried to confirm facts. They would have tried to, you know, do what Hololive does of, of suspend, figure out, 
and then release them if they are like, you know, terminate them if they found that something's bad. Care management protected her and went after the, the people in the forums and Reddit and everything like that that was saying things about it, that were saying the truth about it. They prioritized bully click leader within the Kara branch, same bully that was doxing and harassing the talents by leaking info. And that's what led to the branch failing, pretty much. Uh, they teetered a, a message of cooperation when this happened and much of Ninja Kiara took a lengthy break in January 2022 because they were being bullied. This is not including one of the first people they hired in Korea who had an extensive background in being a bully, TLDR. She worked for another company, as I said before, up there, and she basically did WW2 type uh, T stuff, as right, it was, can be shown right here did really bad stuff to the people in, when they were bullying and they did they protected her they eventually i mean eventually she had to go because the bullying was there but they protected her as much as they could and that is wrong overall the final yeah niji and why the overseas fans are up in arms there's a whole separate entry on various controversies from niji and here's an incomplete list of it right there on the entry keep in mind that this not contain this not contain some bias from known uh, uh the known person and a schizo people, but it does document some of the controversies that EGN has been mired in. But there are some major ones as evidence, or at least some context. Vox Akuma is the big first one we're going to talk about. He's the golden boy right now. He has grooming allegations. Vox has numerous accusations against him, specifically accusations of grooming and engaging in inappropriate behavior towards girls as young as 12. I will note these allegations are more accusations. They are not truth and should not be considered truth unless settled in court of law. As I always say, these are these are allegations. When you have allegations like this, you do not have them as truth until it's in a court of law. Uh, allegations had surfaced since the beginning of his tenure in Niji Sanji, basically making uh, this is not something new, and it's printing out in light of context in the light of recent stuff that's happened. It's been around for years. I will link to say the accusations here. It's in this archive.pl one. Yugo's termination, unnamed formerly Yugo, well, who I talked about the other day, that they pretty much ruined his dream of being an artist. Uh, for a while, and then he eventually came back. He was terminated without an explanation. They were never given a proper farewell, and reasons for their termination is still known is still unknown to this day. However, their termination was seemingly something he accepted. Regardless, this was seen as the beginning of termination. Graduation is worrying him. Nijian. He's doing very well under unnamed. Very happy. He has a new song come that came out recently. I think it was a week ago or something like that. Listen to it. It is amazing. I've listened to it myself. It's amazing. AR live cancellation. This is fairly straightforward and adds on to the cluster F that is in Ichi Sanji. Basically, there was an AR live concert. 19 livers were involved. There was set to be a 3D, de 3D debut for most of them. After months of effort with many livers flying to Japan to practice and record for the concert, it was canceled at the last minute. Uh, Q mass protests and, and snide comments from the livers officially canceled, but many had hoped they would be an indefinite postponement rather than a full cancellation. It's clear that the AR concert was officially canceled since it has been over a year with no word about any rescheduling for this event. And of course, a lot of people who followed this know about the false ID and Kyo's copyright strikes. For even more casual VTuber fans, this was a well-known event within the community. Basically, Niji Sanji decided to copyright strike and shut down false ID and Kyo, two prominent members of the covered VTuber news. Keep in mind, this was due to Zion's termination and the controversy surrounding it. Basically, Niji Sanji copy striked them for trying to uncover information about the issue to silence them. This almost led to False ID's entire channel being taken down due to a rapid succession of copy strikes. I think it was 10. Unsurprisingly, this may explain why he's been more than happy to cover Niji Sanji's recent downfall, for good reason as well. While going after Sabaki was commendable, he was Japanese version of Keemstar and purposely slandered other talents. False and Kyo were much more impartial and personal and presented news, just like I try to do. Especially for smaller VTubers as well, the fact that Niji Sanji disagreed with their criticism of the company and attempted to silence them should not be ignored. They are willing to use every trick in the book to silence opposition and criticism that should be to the surprise of no one. I think Kyo ended up getting like 20 of them, 20 copyright strikes, and I think uh, False got like 10 or something like that. So it's still a ton. Hex Haywire Parasocial Donation Yep. This video covers the entire topic. But TLDR, Hex role, role played as a therapist, according to his lore, he underpaid student therapist. It goes without saying, it uh, goes about as well as you would expect. A fan posted a picture of them cutting and posting it publicly while asking Hex to cure them. He did clarify that he wanted to establish a boundary, but then proceeded to tell his fans to trauma dump through his stream lab. Also a bit of R involved with, with the, the sheiks and the turbans. This also just surface is a surface level details of his concerning actions. There's further info with sources in that video. Honestly, you're surprised at this point. Millie's 4chan stream controversy video speaks for itself. Basically, Millie planned a collab with a good chunk of Niji EN and created a 4chan-esque stream where the livers make some questionable comments and such. Kyo Kaneko's uh, Korean racism allegations where he said basically that, that Korea has medical tourism, which is very true, and that he was going to get his nose fixed over there. And people thought it, thought it was insensitive. It is a pretty stale stereotype. Uh, but he has stale suspended for two weeks because of that. It's pretty reasonable, but begs the question why Niji EN fired Zion over a small joke. And Uki can get away with being racist constantly. And then Kyo can as well. Um, 
Luca's former mod Scorched Earth controversy. This one has been circulating for some time now, especially Selene's termination. Basically, Luca's former at Raziel Warmonic on Twitter blasted Luca on Twitter. The former mod, the former mod blasted Luca on Twitter. I saw that one, the Raziel one. Uh, during the height of the firestorm and follow Selene's termination, through her leaked screenshots informing regarding Luca. Things that she said were Luca didn't actually write his own signed birthday march and Raziel wrote it for them. There are tweets to comment on how bad writing the handwriting looked girly to some of his fans, um, how his handwriting looked girly to some fans. She wrote to the Sakura Bloom and Birthday v VP packs for him. She carried much of the work and he took credit for, such as Minecraft projects. Allegations of Luca's sexual harassment towards her and other girls. The fact that Razio was married woman and groomed Luca, supposedly, uh, after meeting each other on VR chat. So that was a supposed thing as well against her. Uh, you know, things were back and forth. Former Ian Livers alluding to bigger problem with IndieGN. Matara, formerly Nina, uh, mentioned how the company refused to let her defend her own fans and also stated surprised that she was a V Children's management was cooperative and helpful when Nidhi Sani's management was the opposite. And she has that in one of her streams. She has the management video there. Kuro, formerly as Mista, was screwed over by Nidhi Sanji's own incompetent management. He was recommended an accountant by Nidhi Sanji and that accountant turned out to be less than useless. Instead of helping him with taxes, the accountant put him in 300k debt it was V Shoujo who eventually helped him move past from it. He's been vocal about Nidisani's mistreatment and terrible management at Kudo. He was the one where he says, like, man, I don't even get paid 1% of merch sales. That's one of the things that popped in there. And then we have Pomu, and I will divulge your current identity. I will not divulge your current identity, as she wishes to remain anonymous and has not returned to streaming. She broke down in tears in May stream, in a May stream, mentioning how, me how management denied her once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. As I mentioned before, the rat is, the narrative is, uh, another accusation, that there it was active covert sabotage within the organization to make sure that she would not get this. Uh, same as Selene, and how, how tough it was for management kept rejecting your projects. By the way, they deleted the video after it started to spread on YouTube, really telling that management nuked its specific video where she cries about internal issues. Uh, I have I, I have the, the actual video there. Luckily, they haven't taken mine down, which I'm I hopefully they don't. Um, Kamigu Mika Nika Indonesia member felt as though she was a mere stepping stone within the company. As I mentioned the other day in a stream, it was really horrible that she said that 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 happened uh, and felt like she was a burden. This also reinforces previous mentions from the Kuro and Matara Hanuji Sanji makes people feel like they're worthless without the company. Like you are nothing without us. That's how they make you feel. When not when none, not a single former liver has anything good to say about their workplace. This is probably not a good sign. It really isn't a good sign for your company when no one can say something positive about you. Zion was a prophet. Sayu, formerly Zion, was eerily similar to Selene in terms of termination, blasted for trumped up charges, slandered by other livers in the GN, and silenced thereafter. Her termination letter is very similar to Selene's termination letter, in fact. Some charges are outright identical, if not copied. Zion's one girl story reveals abusive workplace with little to no management. Her management manager was two week old hire, and he also replaced. He was also replaced soon after. She was constantly belittled and harassed to the point where she believed she was nothing without the company and was forced to take antidepressants after her termination. While the joke was, she made was in bad taste, and it was. It was implied sexual assault joke, and definitely punishment worthy. The, the fact that the company created trumped up charges on top of it, such as adding the these nuts joke uh, for one of the reasons the termination letter was a joke in and of itself. Not to mention this past week, Uki Violetta was called out for his blatant racism towards white people, not once, not twice, but over a five minute video compilation. Even Zion's termination letter, the company claimed one of her rules she broke was offensive remarks regarding discrimination. Even Kyo was suspended for his, his plastic surgery, uh, gap that he had yet management response to uki's reactions is nothing nothing that should not that should already alert you to selective enforcement rules which we've heard of in niji sanji she warned people the public about the core issues within niji sanji yet she was ignored and the majority of the community until Selene's termination. She was bullied, harassed, doxxed, and everything because of this. And now she know that we know the truth. Oh, we're not we're not done, by the way. We're still not done, apparently. This is a long document. I told you guys it was gonna be a long document. Selene's termination, the match that lit the firestorm. Doki Bird, formerly known as Selene, has had her story spread far and wide. Most of it is well known, but the short summary of this is very good time of events is right here, down here in the Reddit one. The uh, mega thread compilation of Selene uh Tatsuki's uh mentions um and it you know he says thank you to the the redditor that has this here so then try to upload a music video last cup of coffee we all know about this the last cup of coffee incident she got lily pichu's uh permission she got the producer's permission the permission that that they had was in 2022 and um it, the written agreement can be found online it's on twitter the song had been developed for at least several months from the artist worked on the actual video August of 2023, to be precise, it is highly likely that management had to have given permission for the video to begin at all. Other
otherwise she wouldn't have invested 15k in it so they gave her the, the feeling that it would be fine because they gave her permission to start on it if management was unaware that would have been a problem in and of itself and here is is Shio who says that you know Selene got in touch with 13 artists regarding the the last cup of coffee thing to get everything done everything seems to have been you know done in order all that kind of good stuff you can read it right there if you want you can pause and read if you want. They even had uh, the email was sent to management to, to sign an NDA, but it wasn't until the end of January this year that I received the official contract. So basically, uh, Niti Sanji is very inept. They sent the contracts a lot of times barely recently. They sent them within like a month, it, it, like a month of it actually trying to get out. It was really bad. Selene and the artists legally had to file these perms since they were the art of the former or current livers, along with the song perms themselves. Artists confirmed that they shared the sketches and nothing was was uh, some bait and switch. There was no bait and switch here. Months had passed and it's now a week until the project goes out, yet management still hasn't sent in the, the final approval. Instead, she she was ghosted for 37 hours, which she had most likely war wanted to update ahead of time, um, upload the thing ahead of time. If management wasn't aware, again, this is an even bigger issue. It means that management isn't doing their job. Instead of giving the okay to upload, when management finally replies, they send a short message saying that they don't have perms for the IPs that belong to their own company and leaves her on red again did i say ignore my message for 37 hours about a project that has been in development for over a year on the internal calendar for which they have received and had filed perms over a year uh that is scheduled to come out in less than a week sure her uploading the video was a big no and a, and a breach of rules but considering what else we know why are we surprised at selen's reaction this brings us to the nitty-gritty the details uh about how management consistently sabotaged selen to the point where she made zero profit 200k in earnings but zero profit. 200k expenses, but zero profit. Nidhi claims she was at fault for lack of communication of artists resulting in delays and sudden toxic commission payments for the artists. Their words, not the art. How did the artists respond? Every single artist responded and saying, hey, this is not true. We were always paid on time. The one we had issues with was Niji Sanji, who sent us the NDAs late, a lot of times with the wrong name on it. They sent us all this bad info and had it so it was really hard for us to get the NDAs done. Niji, did, Niji does not pay the talents and then blames Selene for it. Artists speak up about Niji Sanji had not only forgotten to pay them, forcing Selene to spend out of pocket, which accrued a $200,000 in expenses, none of which was reimbursed, but also screwed up their NDAs, which allowed them to tell the public the details in the first place because they never signed the NDAs. This was the first, because the NDAs had the wrong names a lot of times. This was not the first slight, by the way. Management regularly canceled her projects, passed her up for sponsorships and collabs, and rejected proposals. They also unilaterally moved her schedule up weeks to swamp her with work screwed over her fall guys tournament and walled her out of the sanrio collab which was her lifelong dream she might be able to get that as doki bird these are all the, the the things that mention uh the sanrio collabs and everything else what we have here is repeated behavior of management that is always rushing her and closing down any of her projects even after she made significant investments for unexpected unexplained reasons that have been occurring for years and consider selen suicide attempt shortly after uh, asking fans to upload the video it can be pretty easy to see the conclusion of the mess the mv was was to be her blank note or at least the act of act, uh, asking her fans to re-upload the mv was made with good intentions but at first it was being denied by management she asked fans to re-upload most likely in memory before she attempted to take you know herself after all management had a pattern of turning it down projects at the last minute why should she expect anything different what gets even more concerning is what follows from Selene's termination letter in an effort to calm the situation we sought to either publicly disclose the reasons for making the music video private or to have Selene Totsky disclose them herself while being mindful of Selene Totsky's physical and mental health management did their best to communicate with not only Selene uh but also the emergency contact and you know they went on with their bs right there if we consider the statement within the letter I recognize that Selene most likely attempted shortly after her December 25th this means that Niji Sanji locked Selene out of her account in retaliation for releasing the video shortly after the 25th Tweet. Yet on December 27th, she made a tweet, which is basically, we all know that it was management at this point because she was locked out. How could she make a tweet? Unless we're assuming that management could not respond in an emergency within 24 hours possible, considering what we know above, but this makes them look even worse. We can assume the management took over her social media and tweeted that Selen was fine. Now, when she was actually hospitalized for attempted for attempted blank, this is several different levels of eft. On top of this, their own termination letter mentioned how Selen basically refused to agree with management's decisions. So despite knowing that one of her drivers was in the hospital for attempted S, they decided to pretend that they were her, posted everything's fine, and then continued to snag about accepting their PR. Um, this is also supported by the fact that they specifically mentioned they were unable to reach her when she was hospitalized. They did all of this while she was recovering. The second attempt on her, on her blank uh, should not be surprising at this point. Instead of trying to support or care for their biggest talent, who had done more to support the company, 200K, out of her own pocket, they instead focused on the PR aspect and skinwalked her 
off and off to fans um skin walked in into her outfit and basically said she was they were her in in twitter and what eventually led to was the termination itself 30 minutes before the termination was posted they privated all of her vods in twitter they went full scorched earth blowing up everything related to her before announcing the termination so then mentioned that they didn't notify her about this and she found out by her own termination through twitter she requested to leave on more neutral terms a simple termination or graduation on January 26th. After receiving a non-response, she proceeded to send official complaint, hence her bringing her lawyer as proof of breach of contract or conduct to terminate herself from Nidhi Sanji. Yet Nidhi Sanji's management reacted going nuclear, releasing the infamous three-page three page character term assassination termination letter. Many similarities to Zion's own termination letter. Meanwhile, management forgot to remove perms of Selene's mods, and they promptly revolted by, by you know, announcing Doki Bird streams. The entire controversy eventually was leaked onto the mainstream, and we all know about that. All the things Penguin Zero, Asmund Gold, everybody, Mudahar, everybody. Yes, absolutely. She disregarded management and told what to, what management told her and uploaded, but to burn her public reputation in response to that, it's mind-bogglingly stupid jumping to the analysis from expert section and watch the video of the PR professor. Nidhi Sandy fired a nuke to uh, onto its own foot to quash an ant. No matter how much blame is on selling herself, reaction was very uh, much over the top, very on par with what they did, especially uh, previously with other talents like Zion, and unfortunately would have worked with Zion's case if Selene didn't have the proof of support from uh, those who knew her. Some additional reactions to the, trans to the letter. Andrew Dice, veteran editor in the games industry, releases tweets heavily criticizing Nidhi Sanji. I remember that. It's saying it's appalling. It's it's bad. It's just horrible. He went on on a long rant about that. It's not to mention the max exodus of sponsors, artists, developers. Cut their connection with Nidhi Sanji. A lot of, a lot of small merch people did that too. Um, and down here is the um the impact of the decision from any color that's going to be neg negligible and um Nidhi Sanji only cares about shareholders at this point that's why they were only doing things for the shareholders this is what this is saying negligible was one of their biggest livers biggest en liver uh considered negligible based on their finances but considering firestorm that was burning throughout yen sphere and specifically pointing out to investors everything was fine it they they messed up here they said uh why would the company ever release this why would they do this if it was negligible they would just leave it alone they wouldn't actually release this they were actually worried if she was negligible why did the company spend time and effort to terminate her in a spectacular fashion and then run to the investors to calm them down again your answer is good as mine we will never know thankfully doki's attempt failed twice and it, it brought us to her return stream. The key points in her return stream. She talks about her attempts and a result of months of build-up stress. And she had met, uh, she has medical records and lawyer approved things to, to prove it. She revealed how she tried to leave Nidhi Sanji on neutral terms when it lied to privilege. She sent stuff through her lawyer because of that. She never wanted the public to know anything about the bullying drama. And she didn't legally say anything more public about it because she wanted to be done with it. Documentation such as therapy sessions and doctor evaluations were kept and she alluded to everyone knew why she was in the hospital and the reason behind it, possibly hinting that more information was sent forward to Nidhi Sanji because she wanted to make sure they knew exactly what was going on. She doesn't want anyone to be harassed or bullied, which makes sense. I don't either uh, because she went through that herself. She went through people looking through her beginnings for the Lunar New Year and to make people laugh. That's what she wanted. This is where she mentioned that she made a net of zero because her mother looked at her finances and knowing what conspired with Niji above, management failing to pay artists, it makes sense she would only make 200k before we dig into the black video which is the last part we're going to go into uh, i want to point out something that i found particularly strange about nidhi sanji releasing the stream right as doki was starting her first gaming stream as doki neopets it was planned ahead of time so it was likely they were they were aware that she was planned that she planned it they were basically stalking her they released a stream when she was trying to step away from the entire dumpster fire and they created more of a dumpster fire by doing this um and you know in the video we all know uh lyra claims that they that these are her own words and feelings this is not a pre pre-programmed video although it was and uh the, they looked at the lawyers and they, they so that they can say their own personal experiences staff claims over the past month they have received documents from Selene's lawyer and examples of her claiming experience that you know being bullied and all that type of stuff and supposedly that they included personal information of her co-workers they know that this information contained with within if publicized runs the risk of being doxxed of course Doki would never do that. We all know that. Illyra states that the document contained information and harmful claims that they believe to be untrue. Vox talks about past experiences and saying that he's a friend and all that kind of stuff. She also alluded to Selene thinking management played favorites, which they did. It, we have other rats that say that they played favorites with Luxium specifically. And they secretly recorded a private conversation talking about it all, which, she, uh, which supposedly was going to be used for evidence, but she says it was only like a minute or two where they were setting up the voice stuff. I believe Doki Bird a bit more. Uh, they were equally reprimanded about staff in similar situations. That's what Vox says, but I don't believe it. Ike reiterates that the documents shown, them, shown to them had claims that they were all thought were untrue and potentially harmful. All three of them claim they've been hurt or betrayed by the situation. Nidhi Sanji put out a video after that, 
uh, you know, apologizing and blah, blah, blah. That the, the black video has a bunch of thumbs down. A lot of people don't like it. I'd like to point out that Vox in previous streams stated that people could just leave the company if they were to disagree with the company actions. We know that to be untrue as well. So considering that he took part in the video and slandered her character, there are more possibilities. Vox threw his friend under the bus uh, to maintain his current lifestyle and contract with Nidhi Sanji because he wanted to see still be favorite. It's actually not easy to leave with Nidhi Sanji despite his claims. Hence, he pointed a gun to his head and had him read out the statement, you know, under duress. Nidhi Sanji showed the document, the evidence to enrage Fox, basically lying to him. None of this is favorable to the company and livers at all because it shows that there is, you know, leaks within the company, which is not good. Also, the possibility that Doki is lying. However, considering her former statements or following statements, I am more inclined to believe her words over a company that has a reputation and track record for doing horrible things. Nishanji basically admitted to sharing private documents, including journal entries of her recollection of being bullied to other livers. If the company's own claims that they were bully bullying among livers were correct, they leaked her private information, some of the more vulnerable uh, moments within her life for to the bullies, to the people who were bullying. It's very much possible that they leaked her medical documents among livers as well. This Fox and Lyra in the black video admitted uh, he went through all the documents very thoroughly. Oh, and they violated a Canadian law as well. Yeah, Pepetta. His response was tame compared to the company's attempt to ruin a character. Through her to Neopets stream, uh, she Doki always uh, says that the documents were only meant to be for her. Nidhi Sanji staff and the lawyers involved. Those documents should never share uh, to the Nidhi Sanji live streamers, etc. She also says that more streams and receipts later on, if, if she has to, uh, none of this was supposed to be shown. It was all supposed to be kept private. Her medical information was not supposed to be shown. But she says here, um, I'm currently talking to my lawyer to see if there's there that if it was only diagnosis like this. She said that it was only the diagnosis that was shared and uh, nothing else, nothing really too serious. But she doesn't like the fact that it was shown to anyone but legal. It should have been shown to no one. But legal. unfortunately, this is the only the end for now. It is very much possible that this company may escalate and cause even greater issues. The Uki R tweet, Wilson's controversial tweet, and stealing the scandal, 39 deaths, claim, uh, I already went through all that stuff, Donkey Bird slandering her on Twitch. There are uh, more to this drama, but I have been extensively covered, False ID, Kyo, Evan Star, all these other people, uh, along with many other VTubers like myself. Um, I am exhausted writing all of this. This was a rough ride. And that's everything that we have today. Thank you so much. Of course, this is your Mad Salvi. Uh, this is a humongous, humongous uh, document. I hope that you have taken some time to just relax and read this along with me and hopefully enjoy it. And hopefully uh, you can comment down below and let me know what's going on. Let me know um, everything that is uh, all the ideas that you have, all the, the, the specific ideas that you have about anything that's going on. I appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. This is the Matt Salvi. My socials in the description below. Have yourself a wonderful day. Take a look at the video that I have on my screen. You might be able to enjoy that. I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. Appreciate you again. Bye-bye.